I decided to make this a video recording this time rather than typing it out because it just seems like the kind of topic that would do well in video. And um, it occurred to me earlier today again, um, what is boredom? See, a lot of the people where I live complain about that a lot. And I don't get bored, or at least not to the extent that people tell me about day after day. And the way I approach life is more along the lines of, okay, if there's nothing to do, think about what you would not want to do. And maybe that'll spur an idea. Um, or if there's nothing to do, um, for whatever reason, let's say there's maintenance going on and you can't do what you regularly do, then I, I don't worry about it. Um, and usually I have too much to do. <laughs> Even when I have time off like the weekend, um, there's all sorts of things attracting me. And I think one of the things that I do that other people don't tend to do is I'm open to new ideas. Um, I'm open to, you know, what ifs. Uh, and I don't set, um, I don't set requirements, right? Because oftentimes when I say to someone, well, you can do this, you can go to the library, or you can check something out online, <clears throat> they'll go, I don't want to do that. And it's almost as though what they're saying is not so much, I'm bored, but I want to be entertained in a certain way. Yeah, I have criteria. And that leads on to the second item, which is they put the onus for being unbored on something or someone else. Um, to get, <laughs> to be, to not be bored means you have to undertake some effort. Um, you have to do something. You have to be responsible for not being bored. Um, and even when I'm in the hospital, let's say, or for a prolonged stay, uh, for whatever reason, I accept that. And I go, okay, <laughs> nothing I can do right now. Um, you know, and so I don't tend to get frustrated. I think what I, I sort of um, approach life with is, let bygones be bygones. So what I can't control right now, I don't worry about it. And one of the big things I don't do is I don't try to get back to a state that is unattainable. Um, some people uh, where I live, um, they've had tragic accidents and you know, their life has changed massively. And there have been things in my life that have occurred to a much lesser extent. Um, for example, I used to be able to walk. Uh, not very well, but I could do it. Um, and when I got to the stage in life where that was just taking way too much effort or too slow or too dangerous... I let that go. I ceased trying to waste ener uh, wasting energy on attaining something that is unattainable. And as a result, um, I went, okay, what can I do with my new situation? Um, now, fortunately, as 
anybody who knows me, I'm a geek. I, I love technology. I'm <coughs> lucky to have people around me in my volunteer work that are fellow uh, technologists and geeks and they all approach life in their very quirky ways. Um, so I'm lucky in that respect. Um, you know, and yes, my attitude has something to do with my upbringing, but I think there's more to it. There's something else. Um, and I think maybe, and you're getting to see my thought processes here, is that, again, I tend to go, I will attempt to fix this or alter my state so that at least what I see as an issue is either less of an issue or if it's totally beyond my control, um, I go, okay, I'll worry about it when I can, uh, when there is something I can do. And if there is no hope of altering something, then one might as well change direction, let that go, and proceed down another path. It may not initially be what you want. For example, when, after years of resisting, I finally acquiesced um, to get into an electric chair, um, and believe me, the, old, the physio involved really had to do a lot of work to demonstrate to me that it was to my benefit over probably half a year, because <laughs> uh, I really drilled them uh, again. Uh, you know, I saw my freedom being reduced. Well, as it turns out, the electric chair uh, did the opposite. It reduced the strain on my body and thereby myself so that I could actually do more. I'd fallen into the trap of being, okay, I'm going to be independent no matter what kind of thing, and putting a great deal in, of energy into my daily just living. And as a result, I was more exhausted but I didn't know it because it was my natural state. So here I am in a really nice chair and, and it goes farther than my uh, scooter ever could and definitely farther than I ever walked. Um, and, you know, um, I now look back and go, gee, what was I doing? Um, and I'm not sad about it. It's just the way life works. So maybe those are the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. Um, don't try to be what you were. Look at your situation. And if you can't change it, accept it. And then look at what you can alter. And accept that that alteration may not be ideal. It may not be what you want, but if it gets you in another space, that's a, that's a step to further opportunity. Um, and yeah, don't put qualifications on, I'm bored, but I only want to be entertained in this way. I only want to do one thing. Um, you know, and that opens up a lot of uh, possibilities. Anyway, this has been just a verbal mental exercise. And I'm going to throw it up on YouTube. And then I'm going to throw it onto my blog, um, notesintheleftmargin.com. If anybody out there finds it useful, great. If anybody has a comment, let her rip. Um, and we'll see if it goes anywhere. Uh, like I said, this has been a sort of mental exercise. And uh, if somebody likes it, 
uh, you are more than welcome to uh, get a hold of me and I will provide um, a video or a written transcript if it's really that useful. Um, anyway, so have a good day. My name is Patrick Clark and uh, we'll see where this goes. Okay, bye-bye.